Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here in Washington, D.C., where we're co covering Satellite 2017. And we are over here at uh, Intelsat, where we're meeting with Bruno uh, Fomont, who is the Senior Vice President for Strategy uh, at Intelsat. Uh, sir, thanks very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Vago. Glad <laughs> to be here. Um, I want to uh, start off, obviously, uh, one of the big announcements uh, last week uh, that you guys had was your interest in perhaps partnering uh, again with OneWeb. A uh, little bit of history there between the two of you. You were an early investor in this uh, global sort of internet, uh, low altitude satellite constellation. Uh, it was at the Paris Air Show, the last Paris Air Show, that, uh, that OneWeb made a deal with Airbus for uh, the, 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 the small satellite constellation, uh, making Tom Enders the happiest man at that, at that air right. show on the right. space side of things. But tell us a little bit about what this deal is and what it means for you guys. Yeah, just a bit of, uh, of an history first. Uh, we, you, as you know, and you reminded people, I mean, we invested in OneWeb in the first place because we saw a, a very interesting opportunity in terms of synergy between our geo fleet and the concept they were developing. Uh, first of all, there's a lot of commonality in the frequencies, which meaning KU band, uh, between our two systems, and we, we saw this, you know, as a way to expand, uh, obviously beyond the geo arc and and cover the earth in a slightly different way. Uh, obviously, um, they, we are also very interested by the partners uh, forming that venture. Uh, think about Airbus that you you, you mentioned, but also. Uh, Coca-Cola, uh, Bordi Atel, um, Grupo Salinas, uh, Virgin Galactic, uh, and Qualcomm obviously, who are actually people outsider from this industry and could bring fresh new ideas uh, for what we're trying to, to, to develop in the future. What is the next step? Because obviously this is a tentative agreement, it's, a, it's an agreement to agree to discuss. Uh, well, you know, what, what kind of timetable are you, you at and how soon should we expect kind of a more formal decision whether or not you guys are going to join? Well, actually, you know, we, we actually have a deal in place. Of course, the deal uh, is subject to some conditions, uh, with, uh, uh, notably with our bondholders. Uh, so they need to, um, to commit and, and, uh, and, uh, and bring their, their assets to the, to, the, to the venture, to the merger. Uh, basically, we think about you know, a six months time frame, uh, the time for us to get these uh, bondholders uh, you know, bond agreement, and uh, at the same time to seek the regulatory authorization from uh, the different party. We don't think it's going to be a problem, but that's about the time frame we're talking about. Um, obviously, um, this has been a changing uh, era in the commercial satellite business. Almost everything that about it is changing. Obviously, you guys are a very high altitude uh, provider. The game is changing to more low altitude uh, satellites. The television game is changing. Television isn't so much of a broadcast mm -hmm. as it is an internet game increasingly. And that's put a lot of financial pressure on you, on, on you guys. How, what are some of the things, aside from this deal you guys are doing, to adapt to this new reality and to remain, you know, first retire the debt, but also pave a growth path for the future. Well, as you mentioned, I mean, one big part of that particular deal is to allow us to get to a, a more, fun, you know, a stable capital structure, uh, which gonna we're gonna achieve with the injection of capital from SoftBank. And I think we we really appreciate that. It's a way for us to get to a state where we can innovate again and and, and focus on our customers. Um, uh, the, what we like also is the ability to expand and reach reach out beyond the the pure satellite industry. Uh, out to the telecommunication world where actually a lot of the standards, a lot of the action is happening in terms of 5G development. This is how we want to basically construct in the future hybrid networks combining the best of both worlds really. Low altitude satellites, uh, high altitude with geo, but also uh, the terminals that are compatible with uh, the future wireless technology. And that's actually paving the way for more connectivity, more connections in the world for Internet of Things, for connected cars, uh, new applications really that are already growing and expanding uh, at an astonishing rate right now. Where do you see uh, the market in five years and where do you guys want, how do you guys want to be positioned? Well, I think we are uh, de facto establishing here with that deal, you know, uh, ourselves as the main, you know, and, you know, uh, providers of, um, Global, with a global scale of capacity, a large amount of capacity in all kind of orbits, uh, able to reach out and deliver managed services to all a range of customers, uh, are, are really our priorities to really be able to address different vertical silos, whether it's from the government, mobility sectors, cellular, cellular backhaul, and traditional video, of course, services, but branching out towards um, uh, over the top and and also Internet of Things. So really it's a wide range of applications and I think that's what we can propose 
uh, as a package basically for, for, for the future. Let me take you to the bandwidth question. Um, obviously, there's going to be a very important discussion here tomorrow uh, where everybody in the industry is getting together to sort of talk a little bit about spectrum and future uses, the changes that have been going on. What are some of the positions you guys are going to take into that, that meeting when it comes to this apportionment and this new uh, spectrum universe that we're talking about? Well, first of all, we are trying to demonstrate, and it's not only Intelsat and OneWeb, but other players in the industry demonstrating that uh, the satellite industry can deliver a very efficient use of spectrum across the board, and that we can provide very comprehensive, I, I would say, wireless solution from the sky to solve the uh, earthbound problems. You know, basically uh, complementing uh, the infrastructure being developed by the wireless people and terrestrial infrastructure people on the ground. And I think um, I think there's more dialogue that needs to be established. You know, between the two communities, um, we we are going to. You know, again, reaffirm you know, the importance for us to preserve some of the, uh, the spectrum allocated by the ITU uh, to, towards you know, the, the, this industry, but also, of course, being you know, uh, you know, open to, to explore potentially some, some of the sharing you know, uh, in the long run in some areas where it makes sense for both of us. Uh, and the ITU is the International Telecommunications That's Union. Right. And so do you actually, I mean, we, we've been hearing this, we heard this from Mark Spiewak, uh, who's, who's over at Boeing, yeah. that, that, you know, it, do you feel that there is going to be a, a renaissance that if you look at, for example, terrestrial cable, fiber, the costs are going to be so high that do you think there's going to be much more of a satellite renaissance in, in the years to come? Um, I, I firmly believe it. Uh, First, because I think all the layers of, of communication and the stacks, you know, uh, need to be taken. There's no empty space. Basically, people are going to fill the void, uh, you know, um, where when when it's possible. There's a, 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 an immense appetite for spectrum to to feed all the application and the growth. The, you know, the unconnected, you know, 60% of the people in the world are not connected to internet today. Um, you know, again, machines and connectivity. So, and you, what's interesting? you see these outside players coming in. You, you know, we, of course, in our case, SoftBank, but in the past, Facebook and Google attempting to find creative ideas and other solution uh, to cover and to overcome the limitation of terrestrial deployment, which take a lot of time. We, uh, and that have inherently some security problems as well. What we bring is, a, is frankly another way uh, to address some of these uh, you know, long-term issues. Bruno, thanks very much and best of luck in the deal. Thank you so much, Michael.